New Zealander, one way I could describe us is that you'll hear us before you see us. Um, and uh, our group here is no exception. I want to thank everybody for being here. Um, I hope everybody is, uh, has a little bit of energy post-lunch. Um, and uh, we're really looking forward to sharing with you a little bit about uh, what we do and what our vision is. Um, we came a long way from New Zealand. Um, it's roughly about 14 hours uh, flight uh, to get here. Um, so I think we deserve a little bit of shout outs to our companies that are here. We, uh, we've brought a, a group of 22 people, including roughly about 16 or 17 companies. Um, if the New Zealanders in the room can raise their hands just to, to, so we can show that we're a little bit of everywhere. Yes, yes, thank you. Um, so I'm gonna just run down the names uh, of the, the companies that we have here. We made a booklet here that profiles every single one of us here with our pictures um, so that you can find us after the fact. Um, so we have Aggregate, we have AgriSmart, AutoGrow, Callahan Innovation, Engender, Figured, Ga Gallagher, GPS It, LIC Automation, New Zealand Plant and Food Research, New Zealand Venture Investment Fund, Plus Group, Taggett Technologies, Trust Codes, UBCO, War42, a partner of Plug and Play here, WildEye, and I am with NZT&E. Now, um, I know it's been a, a long day already, so uh, I want to start out by embracing something about New Zealand. Um, we're good at a lot of things, but we're the world's best in three things. Number one is sailing. Um, now, anyone here that says that, well, the USA won America's Cup, I will challenge that by saying that the US boat was manned by 95% New Zealanders. Now, the challenge is with the best of intentions, and in all seriousness, um, I have offices in um, about 45 different countries, all of which um, are represented here um, in the room, so we are really eager and look forward to opportunities to work with you. I'm going to ask that the panel um, just introduces themselves and tell a little bit about what they do and, and, and their backgrounds. Paul, you want to start? I'm CEO of LIC Automation. We're a 100% uh, owned agri-tech business owned by Livestock Improvement Corporation, which is a cooperative company that's been around 100 years. And over that 100 years, starting with uh, milk testing back in 1909, has developed leading genetics and, and AB services for the New Zealand farmer. Uh, the corporate has uh, just under 11,000 farmer shareholders. And um, we set up the, ag the agri-tech business, which is my business, around 18 months ago, so that we could really focus on developing sensor, drafting, and animal health technologies for the global market. And it's been an interesting transition. I'll talk a little bit more about it later in terms of the products, but the transition in terms of that, that word global, uh, one of the first things I encourage my team to do is to think globally in terms of our product development. The tendency in New Zealand, I think, is sometimes for organisations to think of domestic first and then have the attitude that they're taking product offshore to another place. My challenge to my staff is we're a global business that just happens to have an office in New Zealand. So um, we are currently selling products to, we've sold products to about 2,000 dairy farmers in New Zealand in terms of drafting milk analysis technology and heat detection te technology. Uh, we've launched an island in the UK, and we currently, this, uh, this month, I've got staff in Wisconsin setting up offices there. Tim? Yeah, hi, I'm Tim Cupfield, uh, CEO of Aggregate, which is a joint venture company. Uh, we uh, partnered with LIC and, and New Zealand's biggest dairy cooperative, which is Fonterra, uh, which exports around $18 million worth of um, dairy to the world, with an, uh, biggest dairy exporter in, in the world, actually. So uh, I'm a, a, a part of that. I'm a subsidiary of those two companies. We are a cloud-based pat platform that enables farmers to log in to each of the individual tools that they use on farm to uh, pull that data up and use it in a, in a more powerful way at, at a higher level. Kather? So my name is Kather Simpson, 
and I'm uh, a bit different from these guys in one way that's really obvious to you guys, which is I forgot to wear my uniform pants. <laughs> <laughs> in the less obvious way, I, um, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm a startup company type person, so I have two spin-off companies here. One is called Engender, and we are developing technology to sort sperm by sex for the dairy industry. The other is called Orbis Diagnostics. It's much newer. It's not quite off the ground yet, but we're working hard to get it there. And it will evaluate the composition of milk, every cow, every milking in the shed with no intervention from the farmer. Um, in my day job, I'm a university professor. And so the thing that I think a lot about in New Zealand is how to grow that innovation entrepreneurship culture and communicate better the um, science and technology that we develop in the university into the New Zealand economy and the global economy as a whole. Thanks. Um, now, I want to start by just setting the foundation and, and asking what is the state of the industry uh, as it is right now? Um, and Tim, we'll start with you, uh, with your, your role. Could you describe a little bit for the audience what the dairy industry in New Zealand looks like at the moment? Yeah, sure. The dairy industry um, is really dependent on a commodity price. Um, so if in effect that that price induces a lot of fluctuation in the industry. Uh, we, over the last couple of years, have had a couple of um, downturns. Uh, it's been uh, probably two and a half years since the, the real bottom of that, and now we're definitely on the way back up. Uh, the, the milk price has come well back up in, uh, for New Zealand farmers, which is um, now given a bit, more vol a, a bit more comfort to the farmers to actually um, get out there and explore the ways to uh, innovate and, and actually do more on farm. So some of that innovation from, um, from the downturn, there's definitely spend that goes on on farm there to, to do the maintenance and things like that. But now through an up cycle, there's um, a lot more focus on ensuring that when you come up through that cycle, you don't uh, in increase your spend on a, on a per milk solid basis so that you can then actually ride a down cycle with the next down cycle as well. So it's a very cyclical business, obviously. It's um, heavily focused on getting the best out of our, our pasture in New Zealand. So um, New Zealand agriculture is blessed in that it is uh, predominantly pasture-based. So all of, generally, or all of our cows are actually out on pasture most of the time. So um, that is the lowest cost of feed. Um, the ways that digital plays into that are, are through things like, um, you know, Minder's got a, an, an application called Minder Land and Feed, which helps your farmers um, record the coverage on, on pasture and, and actually get better utilisation out of that. And then through Aggregate, we're able to tap that data up, bring it in with your herd data and, and also through your milk production and actually get a whole of system farm view. Yep, and Paul, what about you with the farmer level? Well, if I can just add to, uh, just to give it, it's, it's, it's some context, um, New Zealand National Herd's about 5 million cows. Uh, we see that as being pretty static over the coming years. Uh, there isn't a lot more land. Well, there is land that can be converted, but we're starting to reach that intersection between sustainability and New Zealand's core brand, which is uh, pure and green, and how much uh, cows and the associated effluents and things that the land can take. So there's been a real big drive over the last uh, number of years to improve the output from that national herd. Um, in the last 20 years, uh, we've improved the kilograms of milk solids production on a per cow basis by about 100 kilograms per cow. And that continues to improve uh, through genetic gain, through better innovation on the farm, and better farm management practices. So I think the challenge for us as an industry is to continue to, you know, in a manufacturing terms, sweat those assets uh, to pr provide better quality milk. And given that we export about 90%, 95%, because that's, that's dried out to milk solids, to powder and inf infant formula, we have to get the content quality of that milk up. So that's what we've been really focusing on. And, and those innovations start at the R&D level, which is an excellent segue to Dr. Simpson here. How are you seeing R&D and, and the, the work that's going on in the labs um, at the moment in terms of dairy and, and animal management? So the sea change in universities that's going on all over the world is um, that we used to be two pillars. We educated the next generation and we discovered new knowledge through research. 
And increasingly, and I think New Zealand's ahead of the game here, we have a third leg to our stool now, which is that we try to um, uh, generate economic benefit for our community. And that community is increasingly not just your region or your country, but it's the world. And so university researchers are actively looking for a way to generate impact with our research that's more than just showing up in a textbook somewhere and providing the underpinning for the technology 20 or 30 years on the horizon. And in New Zealand, dairy is the tail that wags the dog. It's our biggest exporter. We're very, very good at it. And there's a lot of industry pull. So I think the key to the research having the impact that it does in New Zealand is that we talk to the farmers, we talk to the producers, and we figure out what their needs are, and then we adapt what it is we're doing and apply our expertise to addressing those challenges. Now, now Paul, you're on the farm quite a bit, and uh, you deal with uh, dairy and, and animal management, which are core comp competencies for our farmers. Um, what is it that New Zealand does that makes our technology um, so successful in those spaces? Uh, New Zealand is a fairly young nation, and I think, uh, like a lot of young nations, they're willing to give things a go. So the early adoption rate is quite high. It's a population currently climbing quite quickly, about 4.5 billion people. So for a market to actually test technologies and test business practices, um, it's quite agile um, in a whole market sense compared to a, a country that's got a lot more people. Uh, being a cooperative, um, our Farmers are our shareholders, they're also our customers, so they're very engaged in the business. And from a technology point of view, um, recently we've really embraced design thinking around agile development, agile software coding, and part of that design thinking is bringing the farmer into the creation of um, IP, the creation of tools, the creation of software. So they're an active part of the cyclical nature of design thinking in terms of iterating and continuing to iterate. I think what we can do a lot better in New Zealand is partner with each other. Uh, there's been a great group here. Um, you know, there's a lot of power in terms of the thinking. We sh you know, I hate it when I see um, our company investing money and then seeing another company investing money and a third company investing money in exactly the same things. And then we need to leverage that internationally. And uh, we've had some success with um, collaborating with Dillaval and Laylee in the robotic space, um, they use some of our analyzers in every robot that gets shipped, and we share IP in that sense. So I think the sort of protective nature of IP needs to be managed in terms of how we collaborate and connect, and we need to do that in a global sense. So that's um, an opportunity for me to engage with the audience for a moment. By show of hands, how many people in the room have been to New Zealand before? Okay. By show of hands, how many people have either been to New Zealand or would like to go to New Zealand? <laughs> now this right here is an opportunity. <laughs> and by that I mean all of you who are in this industry are welcome to come to New Zealand. Um, I actually manage a program that brings over industry people to New Zealand because we find that as a small nation, collaboration is key. Um, entering markets is difficult, um, but it can be made easier if you have a, a channel partner. Your technology is good, and together perhaps we can make it better. Um, there's a lot of money out there to be made. Um, we're very much about enterprise, and we see ourselves as being a great B2B partner. So um, I want to encourage everyone to reach out to anyone in the group, talk to them about what opportunities might be there, um, and we can design that. Um, I'll turn it back to... Uh, the, the, the panel here. Um, uh, Dr. Simpson, w w have you seen anything on this trip that you found compelling or inspiring or, or interesting in terms of what you do or, or what potential there might be for New Zealand to, to work together with some of the things that we've seen? The thing that really impressed me on this trip was how very much innovation is going on around the world. And so New Zealand is innovating. Um, I learned a lot about what's going on in uh, Latin, South America, Central America, um, in other, in Europe. And it's, it's fascinating to me that there's, uh, people are trying to innovate in the same spaces all over the place. And there, the level of innovation is very high everywhere. And I think that's a good sign for ag tech in general. Um, the kinds of connections that I've made here, certainly I will follow up on. Uh, every single bus ride that we went on, I'm, I had spoken depth with somebody who had something to offer us in New Zealand, but also that we had to offer to them. Great. Um, so I'll close with one last question here before opening it up to the audience or any questions we might have. Um, what 
does the modern farm look like in the future? Five years from now, 10 years from now, what do you think the, the New Zealand farm is going to look like? Tim? Yeah, I think um, farming in the future will, will basically um, rely on a lot more of the decision support tools that are being created at the moment around taking the information, you know, blending the historic data with the very temporal data from things like Internet of Things and, and uh, that on-farm sensing, and then also the predictive nature of, of things like AI, um, you know, blending weather forecasts and those sort of things into those decision support tools. Um, and you know, that, that's already happening in a, in a bunch of spaces, especially around irrigation and things like that, but how does that then relate down to um, you know, pasture management and, and actual anim animal management as well? I, I think a challenge globally is, is the whole labour um, issue um, and also lifestyle. Um, I've talked to farmers and they're considering selling their farm because their kids don't want to take the farm over. Um, and that's because of lifestyle choices. You know, um, we farm year round, uh, we milk year round, we farm year round in New Zealand it's seven days a week. And for the average teenager, that's not a great proposition. So I did hear it consistently through the tour and I was quite impressed with the thinking around how to actually adopt some schemes and make farming a lot more sexy. And I think the way to do it is to really digitalise the whole operation in terms of information management, decision support and automation on farm. You know, we saw the rise of um, robots over the last 10, 15 years and that's just in the milking process. I think a lot more things can be automated on farm to make them far more efficient. And Dr. Simpson, you, uh, you are the one that's going to be creating that future. Um, anything that you see on the horizon? I certainly do. So I think um, among the things that will change, there will be a lot more innovation happening on short time scales. Right now, farmers tend to buy into a type of equipment. It's a big capital investment, and they're stuck in you know, 15 or 20 years ago when they bought that kit. And I think what we're seeing now is a way to adapt and a way to innovate in the same way that we do, say, with our houses. When you want a better house, you don't always change, you don't always just tear it down and build a new one. You renovate your kitchen. You put in a new washing machine. I also think that we'll be getting more productivity for less work, and that will help with that lifestyle. A lot of the innovations that you're seeing will mean it's like having a washing machine in your house. We're not spending three, four, five hours just washing our clothes anymore. We do it, we walk away. And I think farming is gonna move in that direction and that will help as well. Well, great. Well, um, I want to say thank you to everyone for your attention. Um, cheers and kia kaha. And we'll be happy to take any questions that you might have. We stunned them into silence, is that right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mate, cheers. Uh, two questions. One about the program and bringing companies to New Zealand. Give me some details. And the second, uh, learnings from the dairy sector. What do you guys done right and wrong, or where do you see it evolving? I don't want to focus on, in, on wrongs, but where is it going to go, and, and uh, how can the world learn from it? Because you, really, you can't really franchise what you've got. You can't replicate what New Zealand has. It's an amazing dairy environment. Uh, but but the rest of the world also produces and needs to do it more efficiently. Um, yeah, so the program, I'm happy to tell you about it uh, after the fact, it's, but it's very curated towards matchmaking and putting you in front of the things that are relevant to you. Um, we'll also give you the option to bungee jump if you want to, but that's totally on you. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll let the, the panelists ask, answer your second question, but I will definitely say that one of the things that um, New Zealand has a product that might not be immediately obvious is our, our knowledge around farm management um, and how that pairs with our products. Um, and that we have a history of our farmers having no subsidies and um, having a need for being able to farm for profit and, and be very input output oriented towards um, margins, which can be really difficult to do. Um, and our, our products are designed for that. Um, and, and I think that's a mentality that really applies to especially developing nations, that you're going to have small farm systems and you want to support the farmers. Um, and I think that that's some of the things that we can offer through our products. And I don't know if anybody else has any thoughts. Yeah, I do. Um, I think New Zealand, because we've only got four, four and a half million people, um, even when we're doing IT or, or anything like that, it, you've got someone in your family that's related or, or is, is heavily involved in the ag industry. So you're never too far away from it, so that it, it sort of seeps through all of our pores, I guess, is, is one way to describe it. 
I think one thing we've done quite well, and we've had to, to get scale, it's very hard to scale a business in, in a country that's quite small economically. And you've seen it with Fonterra, which um, you know rose out of the 90s and the amalgamation of a whole, whole lot of processes into one unified brand to take the product internationally. You've seen it in the kiwifruit industry with Zespri markets kiwifruit globally for a whole bunch of growers. I think you know that's a demonstration of how we can connect better. What we haven't done is take that to the next level and basically um, set up an ecosystem in terms of the ag tech companies so that, yes, we might compete locally, but we should be looking to unify our efforts globally with global partners, and key to that is identifying key distribution. Um, you know, we've just gone into Australia, we've signed Davies Way, who are here from Australia. Fantastic distributor. We're not going to do it ourselves, we're going to partner with people. Yes, sir. I found in studying other markets outside New Zealand that uh, uh, livestock management, uh, those types of farms are much slower and much more conservative on their take up of technology, IoT and other technologies. Um, and dairying is actually a little bit better than livestock, but I'm curious how the different types of specialties in farming are or how they perform in terms of take up of technology in New Zealand? Um, I, think, I think because we have that cooperative structure, so farmers have a vested interest both at the processing end and also the, the herd management end, we do get good uptake in the dairy market. We've just launched technology into sheep farming and goat farming for milk analysis. Um, they're tending to copy that model. I can't really comment on, on the crop business because I'm not exposed to it, nor horticulture. Um, I do think it comes down to um, I don't like talking about politics, but economic support at a government or regional level. Um, the amount of investment that the government will actually provide and incentives for farmers to actually invest in capital through grants, I think that will accelerate things even more because it, it's quite capital, capital intensive. If, if we think about the future looking like automation, robotics, better genetics, data provision, you know, farmers are going to have to invest. And when the cyclical nature of the milk payout changes, the government and the local authorities need to provide some incentives to accelerate that. I pick up on that as well. The, um, Fonterra itself has has um, apps that our farmers use, and, and over 95, uh, ninety five, ninety of those farmers are using that on on a daily or, or greater basis. So those farmers are, they get their milk production data from that from the day before, or even from that morning. Uh, so that creates a bit of a beachhead for us. Um, and then it's how do we expand out on those things that the farmers want to see off that platform. So that's that's really where we're trying to play at the moment is what other things or what other bits of data should they be combining with that to get a deeper insight into their business? I'll also add, um, I'm American, which you can probably tell from my accent, and I had done no applied science before I moved to New Zealand. The culture in New Zealand, the ethos of um, we help ourselves, we're inventive, we can solve problems is really strong there. But I think also um, the farmers are generally pretty innovative. And gender technology started with a drawing on a piece of paper and some of our very initial investors, when it was just a drawing, uh, were dairy farmers. They're investing in the future of their own, um, their own income, their own uh, industry. And um, I think that's uh, carried out by what you've heard here. Anybody else? Great. Well, thank you all very much. And uh, we look forward to uh, talking more. Cheers.